On today's video, we're going to take a look at how to use an inexpensive webcam as a document camera that can be used in your Google Meet for about $50. So looking at the components first to make this work, we opted to go with a Exelon 1080p HD webcam with autofocus. Uh, I do believe the autofocus is quite important for this, um, but you know you can find options on Amazon or through vendors from your district, uh, anywhere in between $20 all the way up to $100. Um, we did choose to spend a little bit extra on ours. I think we paid about $40 for each one of these, maybe slightly more, uh, just to make sure we would get plenty of use out of them. Uh, the good news here is a lot of you may already have these external webcams. One of the things that I want to make sure and point out is that your webcam is threaded at the bottom for uh, something similar like a tripod. Um, that is going to be a necessity in order for it to work with the uh, arm that I'm going to be showing you here today. So now as far as the arm goes, um, these are available on Amazon as well, but if you have a vendor who specializes in acquiring some of these harder to find items, definitely go through them and uh, they will more than likely be able to help you out. Uh, these can be found on Amazon for under $20. So here is our final product fully assembled. As you can see, as I mentioned earlier, it does need to thread into the uh, mount here. Uh, this mount here is going to give you a lot of adjustability, which I'll be showing you guys in a little bit. This arm also has a couple of pivot points that will allow you to raise lower uh, the arm as necessary. And it also has a pivot point that allows you to turn the camera. And finally, It'll have a uh, bracket here that will allow you to mount it to a desk or to a media cart, whatever it is that you're going to be using. Uh, so now let's see how this is going to tie in. So here we have our camera and arm mounted to the edge of this small table here. And as you can see, because of the pivot, it allows me to use it on this table if I need to. Or if I want to extend it over to this other part of my desk, I can do that as well. It all depends on how you have your home office or classroom setup. One of the things you're going to need to make this work is the IPVO visualizer software. This is not the only software available for this, but this is the one that we have chosen to use uh, based on the uh, price, which is free, and also some of the features that are available. You can find this in the Chrome Web Store under IPVO visualizer, and all you need to do at this point is add it to your Chrome browser. So now that we have added IPVO Visualizer to our computer, we're ready to start using our webcam as a document camera. Now that I've got it set up here, I'm going to go ahead and go to my computer where I will look in my apps and find IPVO Visualizer. When I launch it, there it is. You may run into an issue that when you launch your IPVO Visualizer, it may not be the camera that you are hoping for. On the top left corner here, you will find the camera icon that will allow you to select which camera you want to use. I'm going to use my webcam and you'll notice it'll switch over there. The other thing that you might run into is that your image may show up in a way other than how you want to display it. If you notice here we have our rotate tool and basically you can just click through these until you find the image that you are looking for. That's the one that I want. Also we have a zoom function that will allow us to zoom in and out of our document. This can also be achieved by pulling our camera up or down closer to our document. Again, whatever works for you. And then finally here we have the ability to change the resolution of our image. Now, this is where buying a full HD webcam is going to pay off because you can select one of the higher resolutions and get a much higher quality image. A couple other tools down here at the bottom. IPVO Visualizer does have a annotation software that will allow you to annotate on the screen here. And you can hide it just as easily and bring it back. It has an eraser. Over here on the right side, we have a freeze feature 
that will freeze your image. As you can see, my image is frozen there. I'm going to go ahead and remove my paper and you'll notice my image is still there. I can queue up the next document that I want to show here. And whenever I am ready, I will click on the freeze image again and it will go live again. We also have a tool here that allows you to highlight sentences or it even allows you to black out sentences to really help your students focus. And then finally, there is also a grid feature available. I don't know how well that's going to show up here that you can use for whatever you uh, deem necessary. So now that I have this tool available to me, how am I going to use this in my Google Meet? So I'm making this video with the assumption that you've seen my video on working with an extended screen for remote instruction. Um, as you can see here, I have my Google Meet on one screen and I have my IPvo visualizer on my extended screen. So what I'm going to do here now is within my Google Meet, I am going to go down here and select the present now and I will select your entire screen. You can also select a window. I'm going to go ahead and select my entire screen and you'll notice I have screens to choose from here. I'm going to choose the one that is currently displaying my Pivo Visualizer and I will go ahead and share it. Now I am presenting this screen in my Google Meet and the way I can verify that is up here in the top right corner is a little box that says presentation. I can pin that and it'll show me exactly what is being presented in my Google Meet. As you can see, anything I do on this screen is happening on my presentation in Google Meet. I'm going to go ahead and make this screen larger, my window. So that is what my kids at home are seeing. So when I change my document, you will notice it changes there and it changes here. One of the things I like about this setup is that it is extremely versatile. I can use it as a document camera. I can use it to display items to my class at home when they're not here to see it in person. It can be used by so many different teachers teaching so many different concepts. I can demonstrate to students how to put things together, how to take them apart. I can demonstrate how to edit documents. I can even take my camera and I can flip it up and show my students at home my classroom. I can go get in front of this camera and do exercises if I'm a PE coach. I can do dance routines if I'm a dance teacher. Um, I can even point this camera at my in-class students, should I have any, so that the kids at home can see all the students in class. Once I'm done with that, I can go ahead and turn it back down. I hope this video has been useful to somebody. If I can help at least one person, I've done my job. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below in the comments. And as always, remember to like, subscribe, share, and turn on your notifications for any of my future videos. Have a great school year.